Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Lumio Station. What's up, Lumio Station, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Data Decks with me, the one integral. Now, last week, I asked you guys to vote for Noivern or Gudra, and the winner was Noivern overall, so obviously I'm covering Noivern this week. The vote for this week is for Tyrantrum or for Aurora, so obviously we're looking at the fossil Pokemon from Generation 6 here. If you want to see me cover Tyrantrum sort of sets and stuff like that, comment Tyrantrum. If you want to see me cover Aurora's sets and stuff like that, comment Auroras. Also be sure to hit that like button right now to show your support for the series because it's always liked and I guess we'll just yeah, get on with Noivern shall we? So Noivern, it's a flying dragon type and is a sound wave Pokemon. It's number 715 in the National Pokedex and also features in the Mountain Kalos Pokedex as 114. Noivern is 4 foot 11 inches or 1.5 meters tall, although this could be wingspan, it's never really defined in the games, it's one big problem. Weight for Noivern is 187.4 pounds or 85 kilograms. Noivern is just in the flying uh, egg group, it's not actually in the dragon egg group for some reason, don't quite know why since it is a dragon type, and the male female split is you know, exact 50 50. Noibat evolves into Noivern starting at level 48, so it's a fairly high evolving Pokemon like most dragon types. Taking a quick look at Noivern's base stats here, we can see it has high speed and special attack stats, whereas it's its health points, defense, and special defense aren't that bad, and its attack stat is quite low. But overall, it has pretty decent stats. It's got a very, very high speed stat, which is obviously going to be good for you know jumping in and being faster than the majority of Pokémon out there. First up, looking at Noivern's typing, we can see it resists five types, which are Grass, Fire, Water, Fighting, and Bug. Remember that Grass it resists Grass four times because it's both a Dragon and a Flying type, so that's always good. So always you can you know sw easily switch into uh, Grass type moves. However, Noivern is weak to four types, being Rock, Ice, Dragon, and Fairy. So you really want to you know sort of watch when you switch into these Pokémon. Ice it is four times weak to though because obviously it's Dragon and Flying. So you definitely don't want to be switching into I don't know Mamoswine or anything like that. That would be a bit stupid. It's immune to ground types because, or ground type moves rather, because obviously it's a flying type, which is nice there, and it takes neutral damage from all the other types, you know, normal flying, etc. So it, it, reason it, its typing isn't that bad overall, you know, obviously it's got some resistances, some weaknesses, and immunity, so you can always switch into an earthquake if you're predicting it, you know, so it's generally a decent Pokemon. Then, looking at Noivern's abilities, it has... The first ability is it's a reasonably good ability. It's called it's Frisk, and that means it can check the opposing Pokemon's held item. So when you switch in Noibat, no, Noivern rather, it'll say um, Noivern frisks the opponent's or whatever and found a a choice banner or leftovers, and this can be helpful. Obviously, leftovers you can easily tell or the opponent's using uh, leftovers wise, but choice band, choice scarf aren't as easy to tell. Obviously, you, you can tell depending on their switches and stuff, but sometimes it's helpful just maybe to use it as a lead so you can see what their lead Pokemon's got. Or just something like that. If you if you see a Pokemon spin sent out on the field, you have no idea what it could be. If you say it's a Pokemon that could be used in very different ways depending on the item. Obviously, it might be helpful if you switch out your Noivern just to find out what the opponent is using as their item. So you can obviously find out their set and sort of just adjust your game style to that. Its second ability is Infiltrator, which means it can pass through the opposing Pokemon barrier and also it does damage through barriers. This is stuff like Reflect and Light Screen, it ignores those, so even if they got a Reflect or Light Screen out, you can always you know, just do the normal amount of damage. And it also gets past Substitutes, which is a very helpful ability indeed, you know, especially if they don't know you've got Infiltrator. You know, obviously it's a bit obvious whether you've got Infiltrator or not, because obviously you can tell if they've got Frisk, because they will Frisk you as they come in. Uh, and of course you're not holding an item anymore. But it can be helpful, especially if they forget that you know, they can be hit through substitutes, or you know, obviously they've got they set up a sub. For example, let's say Bloom, it's a sub focus punch set. You can just easily switch your Noivern out, use a quick flamethrower or something, hit past the substitute, and that will be them screwed. They won't be able to use their focus punch anymore. Noivern's hidden ability is Telepathy, which anticipates an ally's attack, ally's attack, and dodges it. Obviously, this is only helpful in double and triple battles, and generally, you don't want to be doing that in double and triple battles anyway, attacking your you know, your own teammate. Obviously, Earthquake is not, you know, that more about Earthquake because of the fact it's immune to Earthquake. Surf, if you're using Surf in a double battle or a triple battle, okay, you might have to worry about that because it's, it, but it is resisted, so it's not too bad. Generally, it's not that helpful, but it's at least in, you know, 6 for 6 singles. Looking at Noivern's highlighted moves here, we can see it learns a few moves by level up and the rest of obviously TM and this one shooter move as well. At level 27 it learns Roost, obviously this can be learned by TM as well, but I mean, you know, list the level up once it learns there. Obviously Roost is helpful for, you know, roosting up and 
you know, restoring some health points. And obviously, remember, when you use Roost, you lose your flying type for the turn. So that's always helpful for, you know, being sort of taking new damage from Ice Beam and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, obviously, you then are, you know, you're um, vulnerable to ground type moves. But then again, your opponent might necessarily want to use a earthquake if if they don't know whether you're going to go for a roost or not, sort of thing. Obviously, it could be help could be worth to remember if you're doing a dull battle. Remember not to use earthquake and roost on the same turn, sort of, some sort of thing there. The next move it learns at level 62 actually is hurricane, which is a powerful flying type move, special as with majority of moves for Noivern, since obviously as we discussed, it's a special attacker. But it's a very powerful flying type move. I think one of the most powerful flying type moves, which is nice. And obviously that's going to do some decent damage. It doesn't have 100% accuracy. But when it does hit, it does some some nice damage there. Then at level 70, it learns Dragon Pulse, which is obviously a strong special dragon type move. Not the strongest you can teach to Noivern, but a pretty strong one. Obviously this one has high accuracy, um, whereas the other one doesn't have high accuracy. So if you want to play it safe, you can give a Dragon Pulse. Then at level 75, it learns Boom Burst, which is a very strong normal, special normal type move. However, obviously it doesn't get stabbed from it, but it can be useful in some situations. Moving on to TMs then, TM12, it can learn Taunt, which is always good for stopping up um, people setting up, you know, stopping people set up and stuff like that, which is you know one use of Noivern, especially because Noivern's high speed, it can get in there with Taunt straight away before they can use I don't know, you know, some sort of substitute or whatever. Then TM35, it can learn Flamethrower, nice powerful fire type move there, again special. TM52 it can learn Focus Blast, nice powerful special fighting type move, again because you know, Noivern is mainly special. And then TM89 can learn U-Turn, this is a physical move, but it was always helpful, especially since you're fast, you can always, instead of just switching your Pokemon out, you can go for the U-Turn, and obviously get out there and do some damage at the same time. The last move we can uh, get Neuven to learn is Draco Meteor, obviously this has to be their tutor though, and that's the tutor between the Pokemon League and Snowbell City, it's not hard to access at all, all you need is strength for the first time and then it's just pretty easy to get to. But um, Draco Meteor is a very powerful special dragon type move, it doesn't have 100% accuracy, it's just the only downside to it, and obviously it does reduce your special attack harshly once you've used it, but it is nice for you know, if, if you just want to get out there and do damage and just take them out straight away, it's a very good move for that. So if we want to look at these setups for Neuvern first of all, this one, the first one is basically uh, it's a choice spec setup. The moveset is Draco Meteor, U-Turn, Flamethrower, Focus Blast or Boom Burst, and then Hurricane. The ability can be Frisk or Infiltrator, it's really up to you whether you want to use Neuvern as something to find out you know, the opponent's items or whether you want just want Infiltrator for the times where they reset for Reflect or a Light Screen or whatever. Nature is timid, you can have modest, but really the speed stat is what we're really focusing on for Noivern because it's really quite fast Pokemon, so timid nature is really best there. Held item, as I mentioned, is a choice specs, which is going to lock you into the first move you use, but obviously, you know, depending on how what situation you're in, especially with Draco Meteor, you might want to use, use it once and then switch out. The EVs are maximum special attack, maximum speed, and the rest in defense, although you can put them in health points as well. So, the moveset, Draco Meteor, obviously the most powerful dragon type move you have available to you, and obviously choice spec Draco Meteor is not something to be laughed about, especially with maximum special attack, and obviously if you're using Modest too, that's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. U-turn, obviously as it's not going to get the boost from choice specs, but it is going to still choice you into the move. So U-turn, you want to use this in a situation, if you switch him, say you were both switching the Pokemon on the same turn, because like you know you both died or whatever. Obviously, depending, if you don't like the Pokemon on the other side, or if you've not got any strengths against them, you can always use the U-turn to just get out of there straight away. Obviously, if you've used a uh, move before, like Hurricane, and you're choice specced into that, or you're choice into that rather, obviously you can't use U-turn to get out of there, so you're gonna have to unfortunately just normally switch out. But U-turn's nice to have there just when you want to do the pivot sort of pivot choice thing there. You could get rid of U-turn and just put one of the other special moves I'm gonna look at in a second, obviously flamethrower, focus blast or boom burst in there, but U-turn is it's, it's a good it's a viable viable choice there. So flamethrower, focus blast or boom burst. Obviously Flamethrower is going to give you a nice advantage against Ice types if they happen to prop, crop up. Grass types not so much because we've got Hurricane. Uh, Focus Blast is good for Dark types and Rock types and stuff like that generally. Uh, and Boom Burst isn't really helpful against anything because obviously Normal is not super effective against anything. But with its high power, it's going to do some decent damage to anything it does neutral to. So obviously if you know you other Normal types, Dark types, Psychic types, anything. It's just a general, a general coverage move. Obviously it's not a huge amount of types that resist Normal. There's only like Rock steel, stuff like that. Uh, there's not a huge amount that resists normal, so it can be good just to get some nice decent damage off. Obviously we have a Hurricane, another powerful stab move for us there, uh, especially since it's a very powerful flying type, and can be good to you know just take out grass types, bug types, anything you see around. Ability I've talked about already, no, don't really have to, it's really up to you whether you want it to um, 
to be used as a, a lead to find out items, or whether you just want the infiltrator there for the times when something does come up, and that obviously helps you out. Nature I've spoken about, held item, obviously it's just choice specs, you know, and then EVs, again, I've spoken about maximum splash attack and speed, so you're, you're fast, and you can do as much damage as you can. Moving on to the next set for Neuven here, this is a life orb setup rather than a choice specs, so unfortunately, um, or fortunately, slash unfortunately, you are obviously going to be able to just switch between moves and pivot around like that, but you are going to lose some health points at the end of each turn because of the life orb. The move set here is going to be Hurricane, Drake Meteor or Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Focus Blast or Boom Burst, and then Roost. Ability again is Frisk or Infiltrator, Nature again is Timid, Held Item, as you might expect, is a life orb, and the EVs are maximum special attack, maximum speed, and the rest of the defense, or again, health points, or special defense, or whatever you want there. So, Hurricane, uh, obviously a powerful flying type move there, especially with life orb, that's going to do some decent damage. Now I've chosen uh, to put Drake Meteor or Dragon Pulse here. The reason for that being, in the last one, as I mentioned, choice specs, you want to just want to go use Drake Meteor maybe once, and then switch out, because they might bring in something that's going to resist dragon types, or just something to counter it in general, like a fairy type Pokemon. But this one, you might want to stay in for a bit longer. You don't, you don't want to get that harshly reduced special attack, because that's not fun when you want to be staying in for a bit longer, especially with Roost there. You want to stay in battle if you can. So the Life Orb is going to use some power um, to the Dragon Pulse. Obviously, you could use Drake Meteor if you wanted to, but you are going to get that special attack reduction, which means you're not really going to be able to stay in too much. Um, whereas the Dragon Pulse, you can sort of just use one, stay in, and obviously you, the Roost is there, so once you've taken uh, a good amount of life, uh, life Orb damage, you can also use the Roost to Roost up, and sort of restore that damage you've taken from that. Again, we have Flamethrower, Focus Blast, or Boom Burst here. Um, again, it's just up to you, you know, general preference. Depends on what your team is using it in as well. You could get rid of Roost and put another, you could have Flamethrower and Focus Blast. However, obviously you have no method of restoring health points then. So it'd be a general suicide setup, do as much damage as you can, or maybe use something like a Wisher just to restore health points if needed. Ability, Nature, and Hide Item I don't need to talk about. EVs I don't really need to talk about either, because it's just maximum special attack, maximum speed. General, you know, fast, hard-hitting special attacker there. Then, last setup. This one is a is basically a setup. Stop, it stops people from setting up, especially if you use it as a lead. So, move set here is Taunt, Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Focus Blast, of Boom Burst again, and then Roost again. Ability of Frisk or Infiltrator, Nature Timid, Held Item this time is a Leftovers or a Life Orb, EVs, Maximum Special Attack, Maximum Speed, and the rest in Defense or Health Points or anything else. So, here, you have Taunt. That, because of your high speed, you're going to be able to go in and you're going to be able to use Taunt, and you're going to be able to stop stuff from you know, setting up on you using a Stun Spore or a whatever it might do to you. Taunt is going to stop them from doing that straight away, as long as you're faster than them. This isn't going to work for Pranks, the Pokemon, um, but obviously Taunt is still going to work for the majority of Pokemon out there, which is nice. And then we have the Dragon Pulse, you know, strong, um, strong Dragon-type move there. Flamethrower, Focus Blast, Boom Burst, again, it's just up to you. Roost, you can have, um, or again, you can just switch out for another Focus Blast or whatever you want. Ability, Nature, don't talk about Held Item, okay. Life Orb is really there if you want, to, if you're carrying Roost, you can use the Life Orb. Um, and you obviously it's just there to get get some extra power on, on the Dragon Pulse, on the Flamethrower, or whatnot. Um, or you can have Leftovers, and this is obviously going to give you some health points back at the end of the turn. Thing to note here is, if you're using Leftovers, you could get rid of Roost and put Focus Blast or whatever you want on the second slot there. Because obviously you're going to have some health points restoration there. It's not much, but it is some, especially if the, you're, you know, you're sort of messing the opponent around, preventing them from attacking hard, especially if it's a Pokemon that needs to set up to do damage. Or if it's Pokemon that relies or heavily on you know, stuff like Leech Seed and stuff like that. So it's very helpful there. It really just depends on how you want to use it. Um, whether you want to you know, have to use Roost and get some more power off. Or whether you want to sort of stay in there be a bit of a thing. Obviously you could have both Leftovers and Roost. But um, then you're obviously going to sacrifice lots of power from no Life Orb. And obviously you don't have that extra slot there on the, atta on the atta attack there. And EVs again, maximum special attack, maximum speed. Don't need to talk about those. Because they're just standard. So guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Pokemon Data Dex. I've told you all you need to know about Noivern. Again, remember to comment in the comment section down below for Tyrantrum or Aurorus, depending on which one you want to see next week. Obviously, I'll look in a few days' time and see which one has the most votes, and then I'll cover that one in next week's episode. So guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, leave your thoughts about Noivern down below, as well as commenting for Tyrantrum or Aurorus, and I guess I'll see you guys next time, guys. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.